All right. Um, so hi, everyone, and welcome to Identifying Impact Pine Castle's Pathways Curriculum, a supportive journey for individuals and DSPs. I'm Elliot Masuda, Events and Community Engagement Lead at Foothold Technology, and thrilled to be your host today. Um, as the lead for both association partnerships and impactful community content, I'm always seeking the intersection of education, innovation, and real-world impact. Um, that's why I was so excited to collaborate on this with Lorianne and Kathleen on this webinar. So last year, this is kind of how it, it this came to be um, at the Foothold Association of Rehabilitation Facilities Conference, um, or FARF, um, which is the Florida um, IDD Association. Pine Castle's Pathways curriculum caught my eye as the winner of the Excellence in Innovation Award. Um, in an era of alternative payment models and value-based care and data and outcomes becoming more and more um, important, um, outcomes is crucial for providers. Um, yet standardized outcome measures remain um, elusive. This curriculum impressed me with its ability to offer a clear roadmap for providers, be user-friendly for program directors um, and direct support professionals, and then um, kind of most important as a software company around data, provide measurable outcomes. Um, given its potential to benefit the entire community, um, I felt strongly that we needed to share this story. Um, so we'll start with the presentation, but remember we aim um, for this to be interactive. So please, uh, we highly encourage you to, the, to use the Q&A feature throughout to ask questions. Um, feel free to make comments about what you may all be doing around this currently, um, and we'll incorporate try to incorporate those questions either during the presentation or at the end. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass along um, to Lorianne to kick things off. Thank you, Elliot. Um, I'm Lorianne Whittington. I'm the CEO at Pine Castle, and we are in Jacksonville, Florida. We are a longstanding um, IDD organization, and we've been here in our community since 1952. So we just celebrated our 70th anniversary last year in the community. And our mission is to empower adults with intellectual and developmental differences through opportunities to learn, work, and connect. So I've been the CEO for about six years. And when I got here to Pine Castle, it was really a great place. It was happy. Everybody was having a good time. Matter of fact, our day program director used to say that uh, it was the second happiest place on earth here in Florida after Disney World because everybody had such a good time all the time. Um, and so that was great, but there was really a lack of structure and the ability to measure results. We really couldn't tell if our participants were making skill gains as far as independence or work readiness um, because it was just a little bit unstructured. So in 2019, we started strategic planning around what we wanted to see for Pine Castle's future. We found some research at that time from the State Employment Leadership Network's Engage newsletter number eight from November 8th, 2018, that was about state roles in providing community life engagement, themes from the Leadership Network's work group. So that's a lot to say. It was some evidence-based research, basically, is what we were looking for. Um, and based on this research, we were looking to build something to measure success in these areas. Number one was life self-satisfaction, moving towards self-identified goals. The second one was community membership and contribution. The third one was decreased dependence on paid supports. And the fourth was leads to or complements employment. So the appropriate cu curriculum, if developed, would also allow us to create better logic models and apply for more private grants and funding by being able to demonstrate outcomes to bridge the gap between government reimbursements and the cost for care in a tight labor market um, our staffing costs were increasing, so more and more our percentage of, of support comes from private philanthropy. Pine Castle used to be about 82% government funded, and now we're only 58% government funded. So philanthropy was a big part of this. And, and also even for our government grants, how do we prove that we're delivering results and we're uh, reaching outcomes for our participants? So uh, we had done some strategic planning and we decided to develop two pathways to success because we know some of our individuals will not ever be um, moving into the community workplace. So 
for instance, our seniors population, maybe some of them have worked in the community, but they're getting older and just like all of us, they want to retire someday. Um, so our seniors didn't really fit in a work program or our individuals with more intensive needs. Uh, they weren't able to work. They were either wheelchair bound or they needed feeding and toileting assistance, things like that, or just anybody that didn't want to work. So we, as a staff, decided we always want to have a pathway for those individuals to um, be successful. And then on the other pathway, there's individuals that maybe are a little bit higher functioning or they have more of a desire um, to work in the community or they have specific interests. So we started out with the premise of having two pathways to success, the pathway to life enrichment for non-working and the pathway to community employment for working preparation. And the goal being on that pathway that ultimately you would get a job in the community. So we began the search for a curriculum developer to develop curriculum for these two pathways. Um, we did an RFP and we ultimately found Kathleen Toffee, who is here with us today of KMC Curriculum Designs. And we worked together with her for about 18 months to develop the, the two curriculum pathways that you're gonna hear about today. Um, and so now today, starting in August 22, the Pine Castle Academy provides a college-like experience and each person has an individual daily schedule that includes time for curriculum, their choice of extracurricular activities like band, chorus, Special Olympics, options for mental health services and working time if they're in the employment pathway. So instead of just kind of coming to our day program and having a free for all day and doing some activities and things as they come along, it's more um, structured and each person has a very individualized schedule based on the combination of needs that they have, just like you would have in high school or college. So um, knowledge is assessed each semester. We broke the year into two semesters, spring and fall. And so we do uh, assessments and quizzes are built into the curriculum that Kathleen designed. And we do administer those things and we have results that we can share a little bit later in the call about um, how our individuals have, have accomplished on uh, the pathway and how they're moving to more and more modules and more and more uh, success with the information they're gaining. So uh, the curriculum has also been purchased by five other providers in Florida because they found the value in the structure. And so we're excited to present it today to you, to a nationwide audience for your information. And without further ado, I'll go ahead and introduce Kathleen to jump in and let you see what the curriculum is all about. Thank you, Lori Ann. This has been such an exciting partnership and just, you know, getting to interact, getting to be on site at Pine Castle and see what they're doing. And like Lori Ann said, you know, even at the beginning of this project, you could see wonderful things were happening on their campus. And, you know, I'm excited to get to provide that extra support that they were looking for and even more excited that this may benefit an even wider audience. So I'm going to pull up. I have some slides to share with you and then you know, I welcome any questions or if there are any other things that you would like to see, please let me know. But I'm going to kind of just briefly go through it just to give you an overall view of, of what we've got here. And Kathleen, as you're um, pulling up those slides, let me know if you have run into any um, okay. technical issues. But again, just encouraging everyone, if you have any questions, to use the Q&A feature. Um, we will try to incorporate those during the presentation or at the end. So. Okay, so... It may be a little confusing because you're going to hear us talk about the Pathways uh, curriculum. And so this was a custom product developed for Pine Castle. But what's been done is it's been kind of generalized so that anybody could use it. So all the Pine Castle specific things are not in the version that's that's ready for others to use. So things like, um, you know, we used a lot of photos of the campus and Pine Castle specific references. So those have been pulled out and there are stock photos there and just to make it more appropriate for anyone to be able to use. And that version of the curriculum, it's the same curriculum, but it's referred to as Broadstone because it needed kind of its own entity for copywriting and that kind of thing. Um, how I came into this, I kind of came into this field a little bit backwards because I didn't set out to be a curriculum designer. It was um, 
more of a necessity for me. I worked as a special education teacher and the students that I worked with, um, you know, standard curriculum just really wasn't working for them. They had higher needs and they needed very specific materials and instruction. So just out of necessity to meet their needs, I was developing a lot of content. And it, it kind of became a passion for me. And in 2009, it was a natural segue for me to just become a curriculum developer. So I've been working in curriculum design since 2009. Uh, this curriculum is the most comprehensive thing that I've done to date. It's been a very exciting project to work on. Um, I've learned some things about myself. I learned that I can actually work in my sleep, which was really funny. I would dream about lessons and then get up and write them. And not all of them, but <laughs> some of them made it in there. And just keeping in that, that work mode, you know, that was really fun. And to get to incorporate all those years in the classroom and all the experiences with all the different learners that I've had the opportunity to work with and provide them for other people to use that knowledge and experience to, to help others. It's just, it's a very exciting thing um, to hear. So starting to look at, you know, like I mentioned, I would have to develop materials for my own students, but I always wanted to make sure that I was relating to a standard and you don't want to just kind of go off the map. So the approach was that we were going to look at those Department of Education, the national standards, the state standards, and make sure that everything we were doing was going to align so that we weren't spinning our wheels and that we wouldn't have to go back and add things later, that we really encompassed all the skills that, that we needed to. So we looked at those standards, and that was how we got the, the framework for the topics that we were going to use for the curriculum. Uh, we wanted to make sure that that curriculum was very accessible to both the instructors and the students and that it applied to the goals that they were going to have. Um, the other piece of that, though, you know, with looking at all those frameworks and standards, it's a good approach, but sometimes you leave gaps in the, the real day-to-day -day lives of the individuals who need those skills. And so that was where we really looked hard at talking to the staff and finding out, you know, what's working, what's not working, what are areas that you see that we need instruction. We also... Um, Lori Ann let me come in and just go in and out of all of the classrooms. I got to meet with the participants, the staff, and get their feedback. So the participants themselves had a voice in this process, which was, I think, a really great element there to find out the things that they were interested in. And then the caregivers. The caregivers gave us some really important information, things they were concerned about that we didn't necessarily see reflected in the standards, things like um, technology. You know, that's a big one. And there's a lot of room for concern there because everyone has a smartphone now. They have access to a lot of things. There are a lot of scams. There's a lot of uh, financial considerations to think about. So we wanted to make sure to include those things. So the, the standards were a good starting point, and then we rounded that out by pulling from those surveys and from those interviews. And what we ended up with is this, um, you know, Lorian was talking about the dual pathways. The pathways mirror each other because those standards that we found were very um, employment focused. So when we adjusted them to look at more of a community focus or a life skills focus, they were still related. And so I wanted to show you a little bit about that, how the pathways mirror each other. This is, it's a benefit in a lot of ways that they do. Um, it allows participants to change their goals. If they're studying from the life enrichment pathway, they're gonna be able to apply what they've learned if they decide that they would like to pursue an employment goal. Um, this is also beneficial for the instructors if they're usually teaching from the employment pathway and they have to fill in for someone on the life enrichment side when they pick up those lessons or work with those materials, it's all going to seem very familiar to them. So we have that correlation there. Um, the other thing that we've seen sometimes, and this is especially something that we're seeing with the new Florida standards, Florida has developed a new standard where um, employment training is on a timeline. 
So if you have someone with an employment goal, but they don't have the prerequisite skills, you may not advise them to start that employment training until they get those prerequisite skills to make sure that they can complete that training in that timeline. So if they're studying from the life enrichment uh, pathway, they're going to be getting that same vocabulary, those same concepts that are going to build those prerequisite skills. And then you're also going to have that documentation of where is retraining needed, when have those gaps been filled, and when are they ready, and that they'll be successful on that employment pathway. So this is kind of a simplified version of that. The next page is not as simple. I've tried to find a way to make it a little simpler for you, but this is kind of, I call this the secret sauce of the curriculum. This is it in a nutshell. These are the topics. These are the modules. There are five modules in each pathway and each module has seven lessons. These are lessons that are taught over several class periods. Um, Pine Castle, they're pacing, they're doing a module per semester. So what you're looking at here represents about three years worth of material. And like I said, this is a lot. Uh, even just fitting it on one page and not making it overwhelming is, is difficult, but I did want you to kind of get to see that. And then you can see here, so this is what I mean when I talk about the pathways mirroring each other. So like personal employment goals would be in module one for employment personal goals and interests. So life enrichment students are also studying and thinking about their individual goals. It's just whether they have that focus of employment or not. Um, I've had this topic come up. I had a provider ask me, they said, well, we already have all of these um, hygiene and grooming lessons. And so we don't really think we need something for employment. But when we get to those employment modules, grooming for the workplace is something different. Then you have to think about dress codes and, you know, why does your boss want you to present yourself a certain way at work? What are the reasons for the dress code? What are dress codes and what do they mean? Um, and just, you know, things like that. Productivity for an employment student would focus on those kind of characteristics within the workplace. Whereas for someone studying from the life enrichment pathway, they're going to be looking at it from a more personal aspect. So someone who is studying um, from module four for employment, if they were looking at managing resources, we're going to be focusing more on how that looks in a work environment. And why do you need to take care of resources in the workplace a certain, a certain way? Why does your boss want you to use this particular cleaning product or not use this product? Whereas someone who's working with the life enrichment pathway, they're going to be looking at it from a more personal level. And then, of course, we round this out with employability skills or community skills. At the end of the lesson modules are what we call the practicum modules. And this is where they're going to take everything they've learned in those lesson modules and they're going to put it into practice they're going to really focus in on their individual goal, whether that's employment or whether it's a, a personal goal. And then there are tools there to track their progress, to figure out where the retraining needs are. Um, there are pieces here that will, I think Pine Castle is actually using some of the pieces of this as kind of a pretest, and they do this at the beginning to gather some baseline, and then they can compare it at the end and see how far has this person come? How have their skills developed? This, to me, this is so exciting to get to, I love the training aspect. We did a virtual training with one of the centers who purchased the curriculum. This was the DSP instructors. This is how they responded when I asked them. I said, why did you choose a job? working with people with disabilities. And you can see their responses. You see a lot of, um, it's a calling, passionate, it's challenging, they want to help people. And so going back to, you know, I called that one page, the secret sauce, and I, I like to use food analogies, but, you know, to me, this is 
the main ingredient of this recipe is their heart to want to help people. So, you know, even, even if they have a very wide range of skills and backgrounds, everyone com coming in that has this kind of mindset, this is going to be the main ingredient for the curriculum to be successful is their passion and their willingness to help. So back to my food analogy, when we look at the curriculum and I compare it to a recipe where we're looking at ingredients, like the ingredient I just showed you of, of their, their desire to help, that's the number one thing. So we want to set them up for success. The recipe, it, it, the curriculum is like a recipe. You can follow it. All the steps are there. It's very step-by-step, -step, um, including like detailed preparation list to say, hey, this, this lesson includes a role play activity. You might want to have some extra staff members available, or you're going to need these specific supplies. A lot of the lessons have everything that you need in there, but then if you need other special supplies, those are listed. We tried to keep this curriculum very engaging, a lot of community focus, a lot of um, emphasis on ways to get out and make those connections. Uh, lots of hands-on, lots of repetition, because that tends to be the way that everyone learns, but especially those with disabilities, that repetition built in is very important. And then enrichment to bring those lessons alive and add some, some extra dimension there. Very engaging. The support materials, I'm going to show you some examples of those in just a minute. Things like the, uh, the visual aids and the lesson aids. And then like Elliot referred to, this was one of the more challenging aspects was to find a way to make the evaluations meaningful and appropriate, and that they would not just be focused on mastery, but to show progress. And so that we could see when people were making progress towards their goals and that we could measure that. So that was a big focus here. So here are some examples of the visual aids. That is just one example of a visual aid from the, um, the teamwork lesson for community employment. It's one of several that go with that lesson. Something that I have seen as an educator that has always bothered me is that when we are working with adults with disabilities, oftentimes we see um, you know, very juvenile images and materials that are meant for children really. And so we wanted to make sure that all of this was age appropriate and very colorful, very engaging. So all of this is in the curriculum. It's provided, it's laminated, so it's really durable. Um, I also put a flash drive so that you've got that. And if you want to project it up onto a screen or if you're working with a larger group or some instructors that are just more comfortable to teach from a virtual format or, or to have you know a computer in their classroom, then they have that option as well. And then lesson pieces. So if there's a game or something like the, the pieces that are popping up now, these are part of one of the hygiene games. Those are already, they're in there, they're cut out. And then I round the corners. I always think about things like that. When you've got laminated pieces, the edges can be sharp. So a lot of attention to detail to make this as easy to implement as possible. I think that's the feedback that I have heard the most is that the instruction part is a little bit intimidating to a lot of the DSP instructors. They have the heart for it, like we looked at on that slide about why they do what they do, but they don't always feel empowered with the level of training they have. They feel like they're not, you know, real teachers and they ask things like, well, how can I teach this when I don't have a teaching degree? And so we want them to feel empowered that this is all ready to go. Everything is laid out for you. You have all the tools that you need to be successful to teach these lessons. These are examples of some of the activities from the curriculum. On the left, that is from the, um, the teamwork 
life enrichment lesson. And this is just one of the activities from that lesson. And during this activity, the students are divided into groups, their teams, and they're getting to, to listen to clues. And the instructor is giving them clues. And as they identify the clues, they build this beautiful table that ends up being their party table that they can celebrate that they finished that module of instruction. So what they're doing, they're, they're utilizing all the skills that they've learned in that lesson and in that module and doing something meaningful. And that to me as a teacher has always been important is that just giving students rote tasks doesn't, it doesn't lead to meaningful learning. You want to give them tasks that make them feel like what they're doing matters and that they're involved in something real and something that values their time and values them as an individual and that they get to play a role and be a part. The, the picture on the right is actually from the on-site training that we did at Pine Castle. That was a really fun day. This lesson is also the teamwork lesson. And you've probably seen this. This is a pretty common team building activity to do the uh, marshmallows and then you use spaghetti noodles and build a tower. So that doesn't sound very real world, but in order to accomplish this task, each person on the team has a job. They know what they're supposed to do. You know, someone's doing quality control, someone's managing materials, someone is providing communications. So helping them to work through that lesson <clears throat> and see how all of their jobs fit together. This was also a great opportunity for me to model some teaching skills for them because the staff did all the things that students in a classroom, in any classroom are gonna do. They um, talked over me while I was trying to teach. They ate the materials. So, you know, there were some things like that that happened that gave me the opportunity to model for them. This is how you keep this lesson engaging. This is how you keep things moving forward. So this is one option. I also do virtual trainings. That's where that slide that I showed you earlier came from, was from one of those virtual trainings. And we do those interactive as well. These are examples of the workbook pages. These are just some of them. I just picked a few to show you. Um, each employment lesson has five workbook pages and each life enrichment has three. And all of the images are pulled from those lessons. So by the time that they get to this point, because this is an important piece of the documentation, everything, they've seen it before. All of this is from the lessons. They've seen these in their visual aids. They've interacted with these concepts over and over. And something that we do in the training is we brainstorm together with the staff. So the DSPs have a chance to interact with me about, you know, how can we use these workbook pages with people who have a variety of needs and abilities and make them meaningful? What are the accommodations? How can we adapt them? How can we modify to make sure that everybody's able to utilize them? This page always just makes me smile, especially the Pine Castle Fashion Show. The day that I pulled that up, I remember opening that on my computer and seeing that come up and it just, it, it made me smile all day. This was one of the activities. It was a suggested activity for enrichment from the workplace attire lesson from the employment pathway. And so there are lists of suggestions of, of all these ideas that you can do that relate to that topic. And Pine Castle chose to do the workplace fashion show. And it was really amazing. This was just one of the pictures from that you can see on the left. And then all of these represent activities that are that are part of the curriculum. They're suggestions of things that can be done out in the community, that can be done on campus, that will enrich the learning, will help with remediation and review. And then also some alternative activity ideas of things for those that are going to need a little more support. Maybe they've gone through the group lesson, but even with a lot of support, encouragement, lots of modifications, they're still not engaging with that. Maybe they need something more one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, those suggestions are there as well. 
So this is just to give you an idea of what, <clears throat> what the curriculum looks like all put together. Um, yeah, this is what it looks like. There are 10 binders and I'll show you in a minute. I'm probably very small on your screen right now. After I stop screen sharing, I'll be able to show you. I have one of the binders and it, you know, it's just very, uh, someone called it granular. I like that description because everything's step by step. There's some scripting in there to make sure that that the instructor knows exactly what they need to do. Bullet points to help guide them through. And so some some organizations are opting to just do one or the other. Maybe they already have some life skills curriculum that that they're using and they like. So they just purchased the community employment. You can also just do the life enrichment or you can bundle them together. Uh, the prices include the virtual training or I can get you a quote if you would like for me to be on site. I can do that as well. Um, if you have multiple sites, there are discounts for that. But this includes everything. I try to make sure that by the time it's in your hands, it's ready to implement. And I think that was some of the appeal for Pine Castle was just knowing that you know, it's like a teacher in a box. You're getting everything you need for your staff to be successful right out of the gate. There's not a lot of questions. Um, I think Pine Castle's first, um, you know, when they were ready to implement, they had a meeting. And I remember hearing feedback from that meeting and they went into that thinking that they were going to get a lot of questions about how to teach the lessons and and you know what they needed to do and instead they were getting lists of materials because the instructors had already looked at everything and said they were excited about it and they were saying you know we want to do this activity and this activity and and you know we'd like to plan these things so you know i thought that was a a really good testimony to how easy it is to implement um you know of course you get a dedicated training and then i'll be doing quarterly trainings so that new hires can come in. You'll have access to me. Uh, Lorianne is very gracious also with answering questions about implementation, scheduling, things like that. So I just want to make sure that there's lots of support as you work on implementing this on your campus. And then I'm going to go ahead and stop screen sharing. And I think Lorianne was going to talk a little bit about some of the results that they've had here. Um, yeah, thank you, Kathy. Um, I did want to mention, too, because the question always comes up about the investment in the curriculum. Um, one of the things that uh, we have found as an agency is that a lot of our donors that love education, they jumped all over this. When we The development costs for this curriculum were far and above what uh, we're able to offer it now to you for. So, uh, we were able to easily raise the money for the development of the curriculum from some of our longtime donors that just really love education. And so I think we put it together with um, three individual family foundations um, that were able to fund the curriculum. So I kind of wanted to mention that right off the bat because um, it, it, and it's also a three year curriculum. So that cost spread over three years is very uh, reasonable. And then um, the results that we have seen is that um, we had set a goal for 50% to pass the first module. We didn't really know what to expect. So we just said, well, at least if half of our students pass the first module, you know, that'll be a benchmark. Just that was just a wild guess. And actually, our first semester, module one for both pathways, which was self advocacy. Um, we had 67% pass in the life enrichment pathway and 82% in the employment pathway. So that just spoke to us that um, the curriculum was on point and that people were able to understand it and they were able to pass the quizzes and to master it. And then the next semester, they would move on to the next module. Now, we have had some individuals over the four semesters that were in our fourth semester right now um, that have had to repeat a module. And that's certainly... Uh, an option. Um, and so we've, we're learning as we develop the curriculum as well as we implement the curriculum. Uh, in some cases, we've gone from two days a week of curriculum to three to allow the students more um, time to work with the curriculum. So the one of the good things is we're always providing these results back to Kathy as well. So if there's any adjustments she can make in the training or the new um, 
the new companies coming on board that are that are utilizing this curriculum, like the five that we have in Florida. Uh, so we're we're providing our learnings to her as we go along so that that can be incorporated in the future training. So we, we've been really pleased with the results. Uh, we have a, a county school teacher on our board, and she was blown away by the, the package and the curriculum. She said, I wish I had this in the public school because it's really step by step. And so um, it's been a great thing for us and our participants. We were worried about having them being on a schedule, um, and they love it. They actually love it. Everybody knows where everybody is at every time of the day and whether they're doing an extracurricular or this curriculum, which is kind of the way we talk about this curriculum is the basics. If you go to school in high school or college and you want to study something like art, they still say, well, everybody has to have English, math and science, right? Those basics, those core classes. And that's kind of how we describe our curriculum, that this is our core classes that everybody needs to take. Doesn't matter which pathway they're on. This is the core. And they go on and they do specialized things and working and extracurricular to supplement that. So that's a little about the results. That's great. Um, and Kathy, do you have any other comments on the results before we um, see if there's any more questions? And we have some questions that we wanted to share um, just to facilitate some conversations as we're approaching the end of the hour. Um, for me, you know, like Lorian said, they're they're providing me with the, you know, the data. So I'm seeing the numbers, you know, who's passing and and where the challenges are so that I can help with training. But the other thing that I asked them, I said, please provide me with that anecdotal data. I want to hear the stories and things like that. And one story that I really appreciated, anybody who's worked with students or who is a parent knows what this is like, where you ask your student, what did you learn today? And you get the blank look, or I don't remember, I don't know. And, you know, that's pretty standard. And it doesn't necessarily mean that good teaching didn't happen that day. But when great teaching is happening, they're going to remember some things. And that's the feedback that I got with that question was that even like within the group home and on campus, that when the instructors were interacting and, and asking, you know, how was your day and what have you been learning about, that they could respond, the participants were able to respond and remember details and remember what they're learning. And to me, that was really good evidence that some meaningful learning is taking place. So that was really exciting feedback for me. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, and Lorian, um, Kathy mentioned in the, her presentation that you might have used some of the um, the either quizzes or maybe assessments at the beginning before individuals. Um, is that is that the case? And did you find, have you been looking kind of on an individual level or are you planning to look at an individual level to see the progress in which someone began going into either the module or the entire um, curriculum? That would be interesting. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, it was really important for us to have a benchmark, a starting point, so that we knew where everybody was starting in their level of knowledge. So, those pre-assessments were really important. We've also done a lot of surveys along the way and we've measured, um, you know, how, how do you feel about the curriculum? How do you feel about the teaching? Are you, um, you know, are, we're asking them sort of that qualitative data as well. And um, we're measuring those results. And of course, each individual with us has an individual support plan. And so they have goals and, and we can tell if, if they have changed from the early, the beginning of the semester survey, looking at their results, and then at the end of the semester survey. So we can individually tell on each person with their case manager what um, their results have been, and also collectively measure a whole semester and a whole pathway and the, and the number of individuals that are moving on to the next module. So it does provide us a lot of data. Um, and we've been able to go back and utilize that in our grant reporting and different things like that. And so we, we can now say we have a, a proven model. And as Kathy said, she's based it on standards. We based it on um, the national standards for IDD as far as learning and self-mastery. So it's very, um, I don't know that we can fully stamp it as evidence-based, but it's heavily, um, you know, standards-based. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and you kind of alluded to this, Lorianne, but have you, 
um, shared any of the data either with your current funders or um, with like funding entities to try to secure um, new funding and how has it, you know, do we have any anecdotal and data in terms of how it's been received? Well, it's definitely been well received. And we had the, the families that funded the original curriculum back in um, at the start of the academy. And Kathy, I think you were here even when we did that. Um, um, just showing them like how we got started and what the first semester results were and everything. They were just so excited to see the results of what they had invested in on behalf of our individuals. And then as we do our grant reporting for especially our work pathway grants, we have a lot of grants for workforce development and community employment because a lot of the corporations want to develop you know, this population is, is definitely an untapped population in our national labor shortage. So we've used these results, especially on our workforce, uh, work, work pathway curriculum, when we're asking for those new grants for workforce development to help, say, our janitorial crew or our culinary crew or our um, manufacturing students, um, showing what the curriculum has proven that their results are um, and getting them ready for community employment. Yeah, I didn't even think I think that would be a great kind of almost marketing tool to employers to mm -hmm. show them like this is all we're doing to, you know, and even I, I I mean, I don't know if this is the case, but even for employers, you could potentially um customize some of the the curriculum here and there to try to, you know, for certain employers, if you had a big enough employer that's trying to feed, um, you know, work with your organization, which could be. Yes, definitely. And that's why we consider what Kathy has developed for us as the core, right? And then we're actually also looking to supplement that with um, certifications for culinary, certifications for custodial, which, so we provide the core life skills and basics on going to work and managing, being an employee and all that. And then we're, we're actually planning to layer that with the job specific skills to go with it. So I think that's going to be a powerful testimony and it already has been, we've already placed um, several individuals over these last couple of semesters in community employment that we can say, you know, have, have, have gone through some of these modules and, and mastered them and, and individuals can also go faster. Like if they can move through a module faster, we'll move them into the next one. So the one per semester is just kind of a standard, but again, we try to individualize that to each um, person and to meet their needs. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so we have a question is, so would the curriculum integrate into existing programs or is the intention to replace um, the curriculum? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, the way we look at it again is around the schedule. So because they're not going to be in curriculum all day, we look at it as one class in their schedule. So maybe on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at nine o'clock, they have their curriculum at, or nine to, nine to 11, up to two hours a day. So we only have the individuals for six and a half hours a day. So it's just kind of like putting together a puzzle with each one of them. So it does work hand in hand with other things that you're doing. So, uh, so for example, someone on the work pathway might come in at 8.30, kind of get settled in their homeroom. Uh, they might have breakfast. And then from 9 to 11, they're going to have curriculum. From 11 to 12, they might be on the basketball Special Olympics team. So they're doing an extracurricular. Then they have lunch. And then they, uh, they might even, if they have a dual diagnosis with a mental health um, challenge, they might go to group or individual therapy from one to two o'clock, and then they might work from two to three or something like that. It just depends on each person. So it's a component of the whole day for our um, participants. But again, it's that basic skill building along with socialization and extracurricular with work training opportunities and, and mental health if needed. So it's it's just a unique combination for each individual, but it's definitely a piece. It's not all of what we're doing and it integrates well with other things. Awesome. Um, so that's all the questions. The last one that I would love to kind of wrap up is um, both from you, Lori Ann and um, Kathy is what advice would you give to an organization considering adopting the pathways cur curriculum? Um, Kathy, you want to go first? <laughs> Is this your curriculum? I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, attitude is everything. 
And that's what I've seen. Like I get a feel really quick when I meet with providers of what their climate is on their campus. And when you see people who have this can do positive, that filters all the way down and the participants are, are feeling that as well. And so just coming into it with that idea and understanding that, you know, this, this is doable and especially when there are changes, like that's what Florida is kind of, that's the challenge that they're working through right now is that there are a lot of state requirements that are changing. That puts a lot of pressure and everyone starts to panic a little bit. How are we going to meet these standards? How are we going to, you know, provide the services that we're being asked to provide and just, you know, go step by step, approach it as a team and, you know, look back like that one slide. I just, I love that getting that feedback from the DSPs themselves of why they do what they do. Cause we know they're not in it for fame and fortune. This is a job you do because your heart is in it. So they're doing this because they care and they want to help people. So, you know, capitalize on that and make that the focus and keep that in mind of making sure that they're empowered because we put a lot of focus on students and their outcomes. But in order to get to that, the whole staff has to be, you know, everybody's got to be integrated into it. Everybody's got to, to kind of buy in and, and, and be enthusiastic about it. Well, I agree, Kathy. And one thing you said is really a key phrase that we use all the time at Pine Castle. We talk about um, how our founding families really wanted to find out what their participants could do instead of focusing on what they couldn't do. So that can do attitude. It's just like all of us, um, focusing on our strengths versus working in our weaknesses. I mean, if we all went around and said what we were not good at, it would be pretty depressing, right? But if we work in our strengths, it's very much uh, doable. And I think, uh, so a positive attitude is really important because a lot of people told us, well, your participants, you know, they'll never be able to do quizzes. They'll never be able to, that's like too hard for them. That's going to be challenging. And, and honestly, we didn't develop this curriculum we, we have no intention of offering it any farther out than Pine Castle. It was just for us. And it was just so that we could say, um, let's see what they can do, right? And that's always been our focus. What can they do? And they have proven above and beyond our expectations that they can do this. They can learn these things. They can take tests. They can understand. Um, Kathy has flashcards for those that are nonverbal. Um, she has written tests for those so it's very customized across the spectrum. And so once we saw how successful it was, and once I saw all of my other peer agencies in Florida struggling with, you know, what do we do? And then our state agency for persons with disabilities split our billing into employment and non-employment. We were so far ahead of the curve and it enabled us to even get off of sub-minimum wage to paying minimum wage to all of our working participants last March. So we've seen the empowerment that this curriculum has brought to our agency. And so we just said, hey, let's offer it to other agencies in Florida. And several people have found it to be very successful for their agency as well. And then Elliot has given us the opportunity to offer it out a little bit farther because we're just so excited about the results. I feel like so many people could benefit. Um, so many participants could benefit. So, um, so uh, thank you, Elliot, again, for this opportunity. Yeah, no problem. I, you know, that's uh, why I do the work that I do is to try to, you know, help um, bring positive impact to the community as we're all in this for, um, you know, to support the individuals that you all support. And I just, again, always am in awe and all the work that the um, providers that I get to come across do each and every day. So um, with that, I just want to thank Kathy and Lorianne for their time today and thank everyone that attended. Um, if you do, we will be following up. Kathy, can I share those slides in the follow-up email? Is that, I forgot to ask you. Okay, so we'll be able to have the, the slide deck in that email as well as um, Kathy and Lorianne's contact information. If you have any questions or of course in, interested in learning more or potentially purchasing the, the curriculum. So um, again, thanks everyone. Have a good rest of your day. We're nine minutes a, a little bit early. So <laughs> enjoy that in, the, in that time back for you all. Um, and thanks everyone again. Have a good one. Thank you so much, Elliot. Thank you everyone.